I'm going to quote Mike Tyson here. He said, quote, I believe this is just going to be the beginning and whatever happens, happens in life. I'm just interested in fighting for the title of giving. It feels soul cleaning for some reason. Doing it for myself doesn't do it for me no more, end quote. And of course, he's talking about his comeback of sorts. He's looking to have this exhibition against Roy Jones sometime this year. He also revealed that after his training video, which got released on social media that went viral, he was in bed for a week because at 54 years of age, his body isn't used to doing that type of workout anymore. Isn't used to the level of training that he was doing in his 20s and in his 30s. And so doing that type of training, even for a day or two, wiped him out. <laughs> right? He said a little 30 second clip wiped him out for a week. I think that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but I think what led up to that 30 second clip is what wiped him out for a week. So I'm going to quote Mike Tyson again. He said, quote, I was discussing with my wife something about me being overweight. And she said, why don't you just get on a treadmill for 15 minutes a day? But then it went from 15 minutes a day to two hours a day. I just started losing weight. And my brother-in-law said, hey, Mike, I know you're not going to want it, but someone asked if you would fight this guy for 30 or 40 million bucks. I said, get the F, whoa, hold on. Who would they like me to fight? And he said, it was Bob Sapp. I'm saying to myself, I know Bob. I know he's big and strong. So I asked how they wanted me to fight him. If it would be Queensbury rules. He asked the guy, the guy said, yes. And I said, I would fight him. Getting in shape and getting conditioned are two different animals. They don't be even belong in the same division of working out. Getting in shape is getting able to fit in your clothes. Being in condition is being able to come outside of your soul. You can't do that automatically. The emotional state to prepare for that is mind boggling. Let me tell you something about the first uh, training video. I did that video and I was in bed for a week. That was 30 seconds and I was in bed for a week. That was not funny because it made me realize that this is big boy, you know what, end quote. So, some interesting things that Mike Tyson said there. First of all, saying that this is just going to be the beginning. Is he hinting that should he get past this exhibition with Roy Jones victorious, that he may entertain the possibility of coming back in a professional capacity and actually making a run of it as a contender. Is that what Mike Tyson is hinting at? I guess it all depends on how it goes and how he feels. Also, with regards to his uh, condition, you know, said he, he did 15 minutes and he was in bed for, for a week because of the intensity of the training. Indeed, there is a big difference between being aesthetically in shape, looking like you're in shape, and having a, a level of functional conditioning. So with dieting and weightlifting, you can get yourself ripped and shredded, but you wouldn't be able to go 10 rounds at a good pace in a boxing match, right? So I guess he's talking about the difference between aesthetic shape and being in, you know, be, being match fit as we say it in the UK, being fight fit, being match fit. There is a big difference. You know, over the years in the boxing gyms, I've seen people like some of my friends who I used to try and get to come to the boxing gym. They were football players, right? They used to play in America. They call it soccer. The rest of the world, we call it football because you play it with your feet. I mean, go figure, right? <laughs> uh, they were football players. They used to run around for 90 minutes on the pitch no problem at all. They were physically fit, but they would come into a boxing gym and you'd take them on the pads or get them to hit a bag and they'd be tired very, very quickly. They couldn't do the rounds like boxers could do it. So it's a different type of conditioning when you're boxing than it is when you're running around on a football pitch or when you're in a fitness gym on a treadmill, pushing weights. It's a different type of fitness altogether. Boxing is a very specific fitness. And I think that boxing, because you're using your arms so much, and obviously 
you know, when you're generating power, you're using your arms and legs and all that kind of business. But obviously, uh, with boxing, it's not just using your legs and rotating your hips and planting your feet. You're also using your upper body an, an awful lot. You're throwing throughout the course of a 10 or 12 round fight, hundreds of punches, sometimes thousands of punches, depending on what weight you are. That, in my estimation, is a lot more cardio intensive than running around on a football pitch, okay? Because of the muscles that are so close to your heart that you're using a lot during a boxing match, throwing hundreds or thousands of punches. So again, I'm not somebody who has a degree in biology or, or anatomy or anything like that. All I can tell you is through personal experience, guys who have a good level of fitness in other sports, they come into boxing and try boxing training and they're knackered quite quickly. And yet you've got boxers in there who wouldn't be able to run around on a football pitch for 90 minutes, but they can do 12 rounds at a decent pace quite easily. <laughs> you know, so it's a different type of fitness. Now, with Mike Tyson, he was not just a pressure fighter, but he was a very athletically gifted pressure fighter. As pressure fighters go, particularly at heavyweight, Mike Tyson had unusually quick feet, unusually quick head movement, unusually quick reflexes, and unusually quick hands. If you look up the word explosive in the dictionary, you're going to see a picture of Mike Tyson. He was the epitome of what an explosive fighter is. Now, that, he, obviously, a lot of it came from natural ability, but it had to be worked on and honed and enhanced in order for him to become the youngest heavyweight champion of all time. And in doing so, the intensity of training that Mike Tyson had to do was far beyond what most boxers were doing. It had to be, because Mike Tyson was giving away so much in height and reach. In order to fight the way that he fought, explosive, fast combinations, you know, head movement, getting in quickly, past the jab, it takes a tremendous amount of fitness to be able to do that especially over the course of a long fight. The energy levels that it takes are incredible. Yeah? That is why Mike Tyson, and he had to be technically very, very sound. Virtually flawless, at least within his style. Okay, now, the Costamado style has flaws in it, like innately in it. You know, it has weaknesses. Let me not, let me not call them flaws, let me call them weaknesses. Every style has weaknesses. The D'Amato style had weaknesses. But in terms of what the D'Amato style was trying to do, Mike Tyson did it perfectly in his prime, okay? And doing that perfectly, especially at heavyweight, takes an incredible level of fitness, which Mike Tyson had. And he would do insane types of training. I mean, Mike Tyson in his prime was doing something like over a 1,000 uh, or 2,000 sit-ups with a 20 pound weight on his chest a day during training camp. I mean, that's crazy, <laughs> especially for a heavyweight. If you're talking about lighter guys, they tend to be able to do more reps when it comes to, you know, body exercises and what have you. But for a heavyweight to be <laughs> doing 2,000 sit ups with a 20 pound weight on his chest a day in training, that's insane. He was also doing 500 push ups a day. And this is back in, you know, the 80s, 90s. Uh, 500 push-ups is a lot. It's not unprecedented and it's not crazy, you know, crazy amount. I've heard of fighters at lighter weights doing a lot more than that. I remember Gerald McClellan used to do like a thousand push-ups a day. So, you know, but still, Mike Tyson was doing extremely intense training. His technique had to be absolutely bang on. He had to be immaculate right the way across the board to be as effective as he was. And even now at 54 years of age, Mike Tyson has that level of fitness and technique drilled into him psychologically. He, he is shooting for that standard even now. Okay. Hence why Mike Tyson ended up in bed for a week <laughs> after that 
training clip was filmed and everything that led up to that training clip. Yeah. Um, and when I say everything that led up to that training clip, he didn't just get out of bed without having done any training at all for however many years and hit the pads and that training clip came out. No, as he explained uh, in the interview, his wife told him, you know, do 15 minutes on a treadmill a day. That turned into a couple hours. So he was getting himself into some type of shape prior to that training clip being filmed. Okay, that training clip might have been the first intense, uh, you know, boxing training that he'd done in terms of hitting pads and all that kind of stuff in a long time. But he'd been doing some, you know, cardiovascular exercise, I guess, for weeks leading up to that. But anyway, Mike Tyson, 54 years of age, still has a certain degree of, you know, athleticism, standout athleticism, as we can see, still got fast hands, still appears explosive. But how long could he actually do that for in a fight? I know they've got these very impressive little clips that have all been edited together of Mike Tyson hitting pads. Let's see some video footage, some unedited video footage of Mike Tyson hitting pads, hitting the bag, let's say for three rounds. If we can see that, then we'll get a realistic idea of where he's at. You know, some people have said they might even pick Roy Jones to beat Mike Tyson, maybe on points. I believe it's a six round fight, is it? Or an eight round fight. And if Mike Tyson's fitness really isn't there at 54 years of age, then it's possible Roy Jones could beat him. You know, I just feel like they're both around the same height. Roy Jones might have the slightly longer reach. We know he's got quicker feet. Um, but if Mike Tyson lands a solid jab, it's all over for Roy Jones. <laughs> because even though Mike is clearly not what he used to be, he's still a very powerful man. And uh, if he catches Roy with anything remotely solid, I think it's good night, Irene. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about Mike Tyson's recent comments. Uh, will he actually try and make a proper comeback? How will this Roy Jones exhibition go if it takes place? And what do you think about the chances Mike Tyson may have if he does embark on a proper comeback? Let me know in the comment section below, people. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.